So we'll continue with some of the practical applications of um, this theory on how it works in body talk. We just talked about how we can get the immune system to target a particular chronic disease or even an acute one by reprioritizing it using the intelligence of innate. And uh, I would point out that the body can do this even in the most extreme cases. I've seen people in life-threatening situations with parasites or, or viruses that, um, where their life has been threatened. And yet when we actually target the right things in, uh, under the instructions of innate, we will see this uh, a turnaround within a few days, and it can be extremely powerful. You should never underestimate the healing power of the body when it's given the right directions and you know, the, the right choices. The big problem is that our normal system, our normal immune system and things like that, is in the average person, it's compromised. It's compromised by stress. Because whether you like it or not, one of the, the biggest things we're dealing with all the time is stress factors. All those things I talk about, whether they be diet, environmental, and everything like that, they're really different, just different forms of stress. Coming in, and that affects the uh, center of the brain, what we call the amygdala complex, which is our fight-flight mechanism. And that, in turn, is very closely linked to the immune system. So when you're in these chronic states of stress all the time, you're actually compromising all that function, including the immune system. And this is why the average person's immune system is not working well. And therefore, it's not learning to target and, uh, with the right priorities and to find the right things and to be aware of chronic things and, and so on, especially when you're looking at 60 trillion bugs every day. That's a lot of enemies okay, to categorize. Uh, but, uh, but other aspects of uh, accumulated stress in the system that we have to target are, are things like uh, emotional stress, emotional stress that's occurring on a regular basis or past emotional stress. And um, a good example of that uh, um, is a, a, a case study. I had a patient who came to me. She was a psychologist about 36 years of age, and she had a uh, massive fibroid at the uterus. And it was, a, it was a fibroid that was continuing to grow quite rapidly. Now, they had already determined it wasn't malignant, so her life wasn't threatened, but it was still growing, and it needed to be removed. And she had been booked in for three weeks' time to have the surgery. But in the meantime, she had blood pressure problems and a bit of stress and a few things like that, so she came to me to see if I could reduce the blood pressure and the stress so that the operation would go better. But, of course, when we're working with the patient in body talk and we're asking an eight, you know, an eight sort of sets the priority. And if an eight says, look, the priority to fix the stress is that we've got to tackle this, then that's where we go. Because remember, we're working under instructions from the innate wisdom. We're not working from our own diagnosis. Now, in her case, it said, oh, you've got to tackle the fibroid because just the, blood, the blood pressure, everything is all to do with that. And uh, with the fibroid, it came up that there was a history. There was an emotional history. Now, as a psychologist, she had sort of guessed that, you know, reproductive system, maybe some sexual trauma, et cetera, sometime in her life, which is a very common history for that type of thing. But she couldn't think of anything, and, you know, she'd looked at it pretty carefully. Anyway, it came up, but through my intuition in communication with her innate, the intuition basically said to me, ah, this happened at 18 years of age, her first year at university. And um, she said, oh, well, and I said, it was to do with a traumatic relationship. And she said, well, I didn't have any relationships when I was 18. I was a student. I went on a couple of dates. That was all, but I really focused on my studies. And okay, so I asked more questions and it came up. I got a date, 21st of September. And I said, that's the day it, whatever occurred, occurred. And at this stage, I was getting some pretty strong images, but I didn't want to express them. And then I got another date about 11 weeks later. That was a second trauma. She couldn't remember it. So I did a treatment that basically was addressing it, but I knew was very likely to bring the memory up. And I told her that over the next 24 hours, she may get flashes of memory because it'll often activate it. But she didn't wait 24 hours. She actually went home and rang her mother immediately and said, Mama, you know, I went to this rather strange, bald-headed guy, and he seems genuine, but he told me this story about something that occurred to me when I was 18 years of age. And in fact, he even said, uh, 21st of September, you know, and um, there was silence on the other end of the line. And after a while, she said, Mum, you know, are you there? And she said, yeah. 
And the mother said, you don't remember that day. She said, no, should I? And the mother said, you should. And after again a little time, the mother decided to tell her and said, 21st of September when you were 18 was the day you were raped, uh, date rape. And the second date he gave you was the day you had an abortion because she fell pregnant during that rape. Uh, they were traumatic. Now, what happened is, once she was told that, the memory came back with the woman very, very clearly. But, you know, she had... That was so traumatic to her that she had shut it out of her memory by the time she was about 25, right? But, you see, her uterus didn't forget, and that's where the trauma was held. And as a result, the fibroid was the anger and the fear and all the things just building up that was now accumulating and... Re and, and irritating the tissue in the fibroid to the point that it became a, a tumour, a benign tumour, but a tumour. So I did the treatment that actually helps to neutralise memory like that, what we call active memory. And I, I tapped the treat treatment out and uh, sent her on away. and I said, well, look, before you have the surgery, I want you to see the gynaecologist the day before and get checked out. And she said, oh, OK. And she did. And uh, three weeks later, I get a phone call and it was from the gynaecologist. And he said, what did you do? And I said, uh, why? He says, well, I've got so-and-so here who went to you, and uh, when I last saw her, she had a massive fibroid. I just saw her today, and I've examined her and just did an ultrasound. Her, her, her uterus is normal. There's no fibroid. It had completely disappeared in the three weeks. Right? And he said, did you do that strange, that weird stuff that, uh, where you tap people on the head? And I said, yeah. And he says, oh, well... Uh, fair enough, but uh, just I don't want to hear about that. <laughs> so um, what we're saying is that if you can, you know, one way of tackling a fibroid is the Cartesian model. It's causing problems, cut it out. The other way of tackling the problem is let's look at why it's there and let's address that. But the thing is, no doctor's going to be able to diagnose the date of a rape. Right? unless he's using the intuitive process. And that's the big difference with body talk to other systems because no, any, any, any form of alternative medicine are not going to know that unless they're using the consciousness-based or intuitive system that we use in body talk. And then we use the techniques that are going to enable that system to work. And um, this applies for all the different diseases. You just need to know what is going on and then, of course, you need to have the right types of techniques that are designed to clear that. But that's sort of a practical application of why the, intu the intuitive process or consciousness-based proce process is a superior process. And, in fact, remember that this process could be utilised by any other system. It is not just for using for body talk. It, you could use it to understand better what's going on so that you could do an acupuncture treatment to release that energy or you could uh, use counselling and psychology and things like that because I'm sure with the pro appropriate psychotherapy to work through that rape scenario could probably dissolve the fibroid too. We've seen that occur. Other systems would get the result, but they need to know what they're having to deal with, and you need that intuitive process to do it.